Tell us about your book, um, Afterlife, Uncovering the Secrets of Life After Death. Well, this is my first book and I'm absolutely delighted with it, delighted with the response and delighted with the way it's all turned out. Afterlife is my investigation into what happens when we die and people are so afraid of death. And this was one of the, the catalysts for writing this book, to be able to help remove that fear, to explain to them that life doesn't cease when we leave the body. And I, I ally it across to an actor taking a role on stage or on film and the, the agent sort of lines it up for them. They get the role, they go in, they agree to it, they sign a contract, they then uh, go in and rehearse, do the performance at the end of it, take the costume off, take the makeup off and go home again and wait for the next role. Now that's pretty similar to what happens to us as human beings. In the afterlife, or in the world of spirit, should we say, uh, we sign a contract, essentially, to be able to come down here each time we come to Earth and we agree to certain conditions. We agree to being in this particular family with these, with these people and in certain areas in life that we're going to go to. And at the end of the whole thing, uh, we then take our costume off, take our makeup, which is our body, and then we go home to wait for the next role. Home is the world of spirit. That's where we come from. Now that's the essential story of afterlife. And I just wanted to get that across to people. And to, as I said before, to take that fear away. And in doing so, I just found the most amazing place, the world of spirit, the afterlife. It is just so brilliant. And the more I investigated, the more I was able to get absolutely entranced by the whole story. So much so that Afterlife is basically the first of at least two books, because the second one's already been written and will be published shortly. Uh, but now, this is Afterlife is, is the introduction, letting people know where we go, what happens when we get there, taking the fear out and knowing that we can communicate with people on the other side and they can communicate with us. That's it in a nutshell. Barry, you talk about your research. How did you do your research? Well, on my radio program, RadioOutThere.com, I've interviewed quite a few people over the years, so I was able to extrapolate some of those uh, aspects of the interviews that related to the afterlife. And in other ways, I then found that I was regressed at one stage, past life regression, and this regression took me back to, the, to my death in a previous life, my last life, and then I was able to follow through all the way from that particular death to the time I was born in this body as Barry. And uh, I was able to weave this through the whole story, so it's my own personal journey as, well, I was Brian in this previous life, and um, what happened when I left the body who met me, where I went, how I coped with things, the whole aspect of the afterlife. Then I went on from there and was working with a, a trance uh, medium who, who communicates with some people on the other side. Very wonderful information. This has just grown and grown and grown. So now I realize that I'm not communicating with one person on the other side. I'm communicating with a group of people. And this just happens to be their spokesperson. And they are, because they communicate by thought in the afterlife, all their thoughts are coming through. So I ask a question. The answer will come through the spokesperson or the spokes spoke spirit, if you like. But it's information that is like the collective wisdom of all of these spirits at various levels of the afterlife. Barry, you mentioned it about it being like the role of an actor. Right? Yeah. So, so you're playing the part of Barry Eaton at this moment in time, I am. right? Mm. Are these people on the other side interfering with Barry's journey? No, they're not. They're not allowed to interfere as such. People uh, know that quite often they'll be able to communicate with uh, spirits of their dearly departed, but and, and they know that they are around us, and they are around us at various times, but they're not allowed to just wander down here at any time they feel like it and, and start whispering in our ear, oh, don't get in the car today, you're going to have an accident, don't get in the car, don't get in the car. No, they're not allowed to do that. They are told how much information they can pass to us. They're not allowed to interfere. They're allowed to help 
and whisper that it might be a really good idea if we went and had lunch with so-and-so today uh, or, or help push that in dream com communication and so on to be able to help us but certainly not there to hinder us unless we tune in to one of the dark spirits and they are there are dark spirits around that's why we have to be careful we have to be careful of things like Ouija boards where you just do not know who you're communicating with and if you do want to communicate use a really good medium and there are some good ones around and it's like you know garage mechanics or whatever there are some great ones around and there's some dodgy ones around you've really got to find the right person otherwise you can end up with some very misleading and often damaging information Barry in your journey with this book has this when you started the book did you change by the time you finished the book very Had much the concept changed in any way very much so it's a funny story on that because I actually wrote this book as a chapter in another book that I sent to a publisher and they said no we don't want to do the whole book that you've written which was going to sort of essentially be like an idiot's guide to, my, to spirituality they said no we don't want that but how would you feel about taking this chapter on, on life after death and reincarnation and turning that into a book well I found that you don't say no to a publisher when they offer you an opportunity like that. So I did, I went away and wrote it, and it just, I found myself on the path that obviously I was meant to be on that path because the book just then flowed and people came to me that needed to come to me. The information was there and it, it happened. You talk about the path. So was this meant to happen at your stage of life or could it have happened earlier? Well, part of this was uh, connecting with my partner, Judy, who, who died after we were only together for a few years. But we kept a lot of contact and she, uh, she helped me a lot. And I kept on getting these messages from various people. Oh, um, I'm being given a message from uh, somebody on the other side. Judy, is it? Uh, it's about time you wrote that book. <laughs> <laughs> so I got nagged from the world of spirit, go and write the book. So eventually uh, I did. And are you happy with it, Barry? Delighted. Absolutely delighted. Now where is it for sale? It's for sale uh, in, in bookstores throughout Australia uh, and most countries of the world. It was released in uh, the middle of August uh, 2013 in the United States from uh, Tarcher, a member of the Penguin Group, had a fantastic reaction in the United States so far. They're really very, very open to this. So this particular book here, Afterlife, is uh, uh, on sale. This is the Australian cover. The American cover is slightly different, but it's, it's for sale in bookstores all over the place. It's also uh, out there on Amazon if people want to download. There's a Kindle edition as well. So it's, it's widely available. And it's a great read, <laughs> even if I say so myself. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. My pleasure.